Welcome to the new Fly Fisher. Today, we're fishing with John Wilson, one of the best guides on the North Fork River here in Arkansas. We've already landed, what, two or three fish? Yeah. It was just unbelievable fishing. This guy is good, and he's gonna show you exactly what to do to get fish. John, great to meet you. Let's get a few fish. All right, Ian, let's go. That was awesome. They're extremely strong fish. Here you go. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, good fish, good fish. Yes. Got him. Yeah! Woo! World record! We talked earlier about having the optimum conditions. Here we've got a good example of the family Heptogeneidae. Uh, very sweet flat. Sweet music, sweet music. This is why you need a lot of backing. This week, the new fly fisher crew is on the Norfolk River in Arkansas. The Norfolk Dam is a major producer of electricity, but has also spawned a tailwater trout fishery that boasts huge numbers of cutthroat, rainbow, and brown trout. The present river record for a brown trout is a whopping 35 pounds and nine ounces. Joining Ian today is river guide John Wilson. John is an FFF master certified casting instructor and the 2005 captain of the U.S. Youth Fly Fishing Team. John's complete knowledge of the area and the river flows will make this an exciting and safe angling experience. There he is. This looks like a little brook trout. Oh, a little cutthroat, beauty. Nice fish. A little, it's a little cut bow. Whoa, there he goes. Our, uh, our cutthroats are the uh, Snake River strain. And uh, this being a tailwater, we don't get a lot of natural reproduction of our rainbows because of the changing water levels. But we do have up in the small creeks, there's a small creek upstream from here. And uh, we do get some natural reproduction with the rainbows in the small creeks. In this particular spot that we're fishing, uh, you'll get some crossbreeding between the, the rainbows and the cutthroats and stuff like that. So you will catch a fair amount of cutbows. Yeah, nifty, yeah. It's very important to have the proper amount of weight on your line. You must add or subtract weight as conditions change. The minimal amount of weight to take the fly to the bottom is needed. Too much weight and the fly will hang up constantly. Too little and the fly doesn't get to the bottom fast enough. What we have here is, uh, you see we've got a long flat pool here that comes into this little tail out of this riffle. And uh, this oxygen oxygenates the water real heavily. And we've got some moss up in the head of this, which contains a fair amount of mayflies, scuds, and our various hatches. It's still pretty early in the morning. So we're not going to have a whole lot of hatches coming off just yet. But those, uh, you know, our insects are disturbed and they do dislodge. So basically there's, there's not a hatch as yet this morning. So what I'm fishing this morning is a scud, which is a, a, a fairly popular tailwater type of a, uh, type of a pattern. And what I've done here on my uh, right angle nymphing system is I'm trying to keep as much fly line out of the water as I possibly can and allow that thing to just to drift naturally through there in any pause, skitter, or anything like that that I see that comes out of that indicator, I set on. There we go. 
There he is. Now this is basically a high sticking technique. Now as he gets closer or if he goes upstream from me, what I'll want to do is then I'll raise the rod tip. And right, I'm going to pull him around over here to the left. Yep. So I'm going to switch sides. He's still downstream. And I'm going to keep him low. Yeah, and that's a big mistake that a lot of fly fishermen make, though, isn't it? They'll lift the rod up, and it gives the fish some leverage. It's not a bad little fish. Nice fish. Not bad at all. That rig that you have is really deadly, isn't it? Oh, it's it's very deadly. Okay, he's coming in, so what I'm gonna do is get him right here in front of me, then then I'll lift. That's a good fish. Up, up, up. There, there he is. So as you can see, you know, this is a wild fish, even though we do have some we do have some stocking in these. Uh, yeah, his, his fins are perfect. There's yeah. not a mark on him, man. He's just absolutely gorgeous. Look how red, you yeah. know, beautifully colored and all that. Very silver. Oh, God. This fish is, what, 16, 17, maybe, something like yeah, that? Yeah, about 17, yeah. Yeah, nice fish, eh? Nice little gaffer. Excellent shot. Excellent call. Let him go. One of, these high, one of these high sticking techniques, Ian, is the thing they call the Lyserian lift, which as the fly comes past, you basically lift the line up and over the indicator and allow it to come and go downstream. So basically that's a drag free drift all the way through there, see? That tippet basically comes directly off that indicator down to the fly, creates very little resistance, so there's not a whole lot of drag. And in nymphing, like we said, the, uh, oh, missed one. And in nymphing, like we said, there's, uh, you know, weight is the key factor in uh, how much, in how the fly drifts along the bottom. Too much weight, it hops. Too little weight, kind of floats free. Oh, oh. oh, that's a toad. Now, we've got this fish downstream again. He's going to head downstream, so we're going to try and apply side pressure to him. There he goes. Woo! Now, see, he's upstream from me, so I'm going to put up pressure. Nice. Oh, beautiful fish. Nice fish. Here we go. Hang on. There he is. Woo. Nicely done. Thank you. Nicely wow. done. What a nice fish. Here we go in another another nice wild rainbow. Beautiful fish. Beautiful guy. Eh? Look at the colors on him too. Beautiful female. And again, that's the trick though. You're using that little tiny tiny fly, and they're just picking that up. Has he been caught before? I can see little markings on his face. Yeah, this is a catch and release area here, so this fish has probably been caught several times in the past. He's got a little bit of a, he's got a little bit of a cutthroat in him. See oh, here. Oh yeah, the, the markings underneath. Yeah. You're saying that. Nice wild oh, fish. That. We'll let him go. Let's let him go. Dropping that, and off he goes. Let's get him out and there. And that is a great technique, though, that you're showing us with just a little, tiny, tiny fly, and just bump, 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 boink. I mean, even I saw that, and that was a good 20 feet below you. Yeah. The strike indicator, it just. Just taps. Just barely moves. And lift it in. And again, the stuff you would tell them about never lift the rod up until the fish comes upstream. Right. Key to, to land on fish like that on a very fine, fine leader, you know? The water at the surface is considerably faster than, than the water down at the bottom. Yep. You get you get some resistance from the rocks below. So what happens is if you lift that fish up into the water column, they use the current to fight you. Yep. If you lower that rod tip, the fish will go down in close to the bottom and just come right straight upstream in that slow current. You can put a lot more pressure on a fish. So you tire them out. Yeah. Well, you just get them in close. You don't tire them out really at all. I mean, the, the trick to this is not really to tire the fish out, you know, so much that you actually beat him before you bring him in. You just, I mean, you just apply slow, steady pressure. You get him in, get him in the net, bam. 
I mean, that was what, you know, 17 inch, 18 inch fish, something like that. And we landed it in like, you know, 120 seconds. Something like that. Yeah. You know, done yep. deal in fast water. So. Yeah, but that's because you're a highly trained professional. Well, I mean, anybody can do what I do, though. That's the point. Anyone can do what John just did. Even a Scottish guy fishing in Arkansas. <laughs> All I gotta do is hook one. <laughs> There he is. Oh, good fish. So toss me through the landing technique again, John. Okay, there. fish downstream, rod low. If the fish is down, the rod's down. The rod's low and into the current. You see, he's, he's fighting me in the current here. There he goes. Now, one of the things that I do try to do too, Ian, yep. is I try to keep the rod 90 degrees to the fish and keep a good bend in it. I've got a pretty soft rod here, so that, that gives me a lot of cushion on my uh, on that 6X tippet. Yeah. I fish an awful lot of 6 and 7X. If you point the rod, see how that rod's starting to point at the fish, yep. then I begin to lose, uh, lose my cushion. Right. So I try to keep that rod 90 degrees to the fish uh -huh. at all times. Boy, this guy is pulling. He's a big fish. I think he's the biggest one so far. You think so? Oh, absolutely. But you know, sometimes when they shake their head, they'll lose several pounds on every head shake. <laughs> that's right, that's right. You know, I think this one's fighting a couple of pounds oh, and a couple inches absolutely. off the whole time, oh, right? Yeah. <laughs> every head shake is a half a pound right there. I'm gonna try and keep him on This here. is really important that you do that, that you keep the rod low and you keep them almost at 90 degrees. And as you say, that's the big spring that's working for you rather than against you. And you just, you just keep that rod bent the whole time. Man, that guy is. He's pulling hard. He's hoofing. Well, now, this river runs down to the Mississippi, doesn't it? Uh, eventually. I think it hits the Arkansas first and then yep. into the Mississippi. So if we don't land them in, what, 10 minutes, we'll be yep. heading that way? This one might have to go to New Orleans. That's a good fish. Yeah. All right, Ian, I'm going to take him right around you here. Oh, yep. gosh. No, I'll move. Whoa, what a fat little chunky guy. Man, he is chunky. He is piggy. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, gosh. There he is. Hey. Wow, this guy's a toad. Holy I mean, we've, we've landed, I don't know, eight or nine fish so far. We've been here maybe an hour, not even an hour. Yeah, maybe 30 minutes. 30 minutes, yeah. I mean, the colors are spectacular. This is a quality wild fish. You're not going to find this in too many rivers. It's a beautiful, beautiful fish. And the people down here are so friendly, and John knows his stuff. It's well worth taking the drive or the flight. Gorgeous. Look at that. Let's let She's this guy go. What do you absolutely, say? Absolutely, yeah. Beautiful fish. There he goes. There he goes. I'll just run the net. <laughs> You'll just run the net from now on? Just call me net boy. <laughs> Another stocky. And this one doesn't have his fin clipped, but you can see how uh, how worn his fins are. Now the fly that I'm using today is a little fly called that we just kind of affectionately called trout crack, and it's uh, you know basically this is a size 16, and it's it's a uh, scud caddis midge sort of a generic imitation, whatever, uh, it's just backed and very sparsely tied. So John, most people often talk about matching the hatch and they think of scuds or mayflies and stuff like that. Right. Well, this is something really interesting here. Maybe you can talk to me a little bit more about that. Well, the, the pattern that you've got here is a San Juan worm. And originally the San Juan worm, I guess, there's, there's a couple of different things that that imitates. It, it will imitate a little chrominid, whatever. Uh, we have some aquatic worms that live here in, in the river system itself. But this being a tailwater, our water levels rise and fall frequently throughout the day. 
and where you've got grass and things like that along the side of the river bank, uh, as the water comes up, it'll actually pick up, you know, just standard earthworms off the sides of the bank uh, that are out crawling around from the night before and, and wash them into the system. And that's a very effective pattern on rising water. And what we've got here, these, these first four over here on the right are basically a scud, you know, sow bug patterns or something. This one over here on the far left is actually a sow bug. And uh, I tie my scud patterns with uh, a Wopsy Antron and then I use a uh, half vinyl round uh, across them. And generally a lot of the uh, commercially tied flies have uh, way too much material. Scuds are a very thin profile across the top of their back. And, uh, and then they're a free swimming uh, sort of a uh, little insect. So uh, they'll get up and swim around. So you need to kind of imitate some legs and, and imitate some, um, some contrast between the back and the bottom of the fly. These are a very effective pattern. Uh, depending on the time of the year, they'll go from gray to tan to olive to dark back with light bodies, whatever. Uh, that contrast tends to work really well on these, uh, on these patterns. There are two setups used today. The first is a standard nymph rig using a 9-foot leader with the strike indicator placed approximately two times the depth of the water and the split shot 14 to 16 inches from the fly. The second is a bottom bouncing setup using a 9-foot leader with no strike indicator and the split shot is 14 to 16 inches from the fly. 9-foot rods in the 6 to 8 weight category are needed due to the size of the fish in the Norfolk River. Large arbor reels filled with a floating line are also recommended for fast line retrieval. Here's an important safety point on fishing in a tailwater fishery. You must mark the bank and you must pay attention to the water level. This river will come up six feet in 45 minutes. I'm six feet tall. So when it starts to rise, you get out the river. You don't make a second cast. You don't look for one more fish. Pack it in and leave. We set up our coffee cup on the river bank so that as soon as we can see the, the water coming up on the edge of that, we're out of here. Sometimes if you use a pile of stones or a stone on the bank, you tend to forget which one you were looking at and it could in fact cost you your life. Don't muck around with it. Put out a coffee cup leave it sitting at the bank and naturally take the coffee cup with you when you go. I'm still not completely understanding what you're doing here. Well Ian, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get our fly on the bottom quickly and then what I'm doing is I'm using the end of the fly line as an indicator just you know in lieu of in lieu of actually having a strike indicator here now just the tip of my fly line is my indicator. I'm looking for any pauses, any jerks, anything that indicates that that fly has paused. So you're maintaining contact with the fly by manipulating the rod and are you bringing in line as well? There oh, he is. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh, they're all jumping. You're going to, oh, there he goes. Long distance rule. That's perfect. This guy's not as big, Ian. But he's not too bad. Were you using the same technique on this one or a different one? No, same technique. We're just, uh... well, this guy is a stocky. John, you were saying this might have been a stocky fish. Sh show me what's the difference. Well, first of all, the first thing that's most obvious is it has a clip fin. I mean, they'll clip the, the adipose back here of one and, and around here, they, they mark them in various ways, kind of depending on what the hatchery is, right? Okay. Another good clue is you can see how the fins are soft. 
they're uh, they're rounded and they're not square and feathery like they will be on a wild fish. Right. So this is this stuff here. This is because the fish has been in the tank and he's been yeah. rubbing and stuff like that on the bottom of the tank. Now, as they grow older, you know, the longer they stay in here, their fins do develop back and and they do kind of come back. Mm -hmm. But I mean, there is definitely a difference between you know what you'll see a stock fish and the way they fight and the way they grow up. They they grow faster in the hatchery than they do out here in the wild. Yeah. So. You know, an 18-inch fish that's a wild fish is going to be completely different than an 18-inch stock fish. So that's why maybe when the lads are fishing, when the guys and girls are out there fly fishing and they get a fish, maybe they want to take a fish home for a snack. Um, that's the guy you want to take. Stocky. Let the wild one go, the one with the full fins, that's the right. fish with the, that's not clipped. Let those guys go to reproduce, and if you need to take one home, keep a stocky. That's right. Great idea. And we've been hooking, you know, a big fish. Yeah, exactly. And if this was catch and keep, those fish wouldn't be here. No, nope. it wouldn't take long. I mean, I could clean out a stretch of river in no time. A, a good quality angler could, you know. Oh, yeah, the, the, without question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you. Well, I don't know about that. You're the, you're the guy that's getting the fish. Well, I'm in the spot. That's well, the only that's difference. Good. As long as you stay in the spot. There he is. Splashy, splashy. This guy, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what I like to see though is all the various sizes of the wild fish that are in here. Yeah, he's got a really good year class one. Yeah, this guy's like, uh, you know, 12 inches, something like that. So you got two or three year classes in here. Beautiful fish though, eh? For more information on today's show and our series, please visit us on the internet at www.thenewflyfisher.com. On behalf of Ian Colin James and the rest of the New Fly Fisher crew, thanks for joining us, tight lines, and we'll see you next time. The New Fly Fisher is made possible thanks to the Canadian Fly Fisher Magazine, Scientific Anglers, Mastering the Sport with Science, Islander Precision Reels, 